Now, if you're new here, where have you been? I've missed you. I've obviously been buried deep in the bowels of the internet and hopefully I'm surfacing up and you will find me. Now, I've done a mod video before. It's had loads of views already. I'm blown away by the support. So all of you have viewed that video. I did a Pagani design mod. I know a lot of you didn't like the actual f outcome of that uh, modification. But you know what? I did it for me. It's not for you. But anyway, what I, want, oh, <laughs> what I wanted to do for you was uh, show you how I did the bits. Um, I wear that watch a lot, by the way. It's not just something I did to make some content. I genuinely wear that watch. I wear it to work, I wear it all the time. I sleep with it, um, I read it poems. Um, it's actually got a bit out of hand. Anyway, I wanted to do another mod video and I've got a bit of a thing for Vostok's. Russian watches, uh, their cult quirkiness. Maybe it's because I'm a leader of a cult and I'm quirky. Only half of that statement is true, by the way. You choose which one. Anyway, this video is about me modifying and showing you how I did it. And some of you will criticize potentially some of the aspects of the video, which I've done right or wrong. But you know what, it worked. I did the video, I did the modifications and the watch is perfectly functional and everything is great. I'm really pleased how it came out. And it's something I just wanted to piece together to show you how easy it can be if you get some confidence, give it a go, get some equipment, watch silly idiots like me on YouTube do it, give you a bit of guidance, if you will. Give it a go. These watches are so cheap, just buy them. Have a go, have some fun and Join the cult, which I am the leader. And here we are. I'm voicing over my previously recorded modification part of the video. So I'm going to run through now. This bezel is from a previous mod I did, so it was left over. I don't know if it's this case size. This dial is from an original Vostok. My first ever Vostok I bought. I'm gonna change the straps out on this watch. And I'll also run through a lot of other aspects of how to do all these little mods to Vostoks in particular, because they've got their own ever so slightly different quirks. And this guide should help show you what those are. So show you how also how easy it is to make the changes to this watch. So I hope you enjoy this video. I've tried to keep it as short as possible, so just under 17 minutes all in, and that includes everything. Now, this is the first job, is to pop this bezel off. They are just push fit, so I've got this removal tool, and I've wrapped it in a bag, so you don't end up scratching your watch or the bezel. As you can see, it's really easy. So it's just a bit of leverage and it pops off. You can either leave your watch totally naked if you wish, or you can redress it with the other bezel. It's still got the original spring in there. Now it's friction bezel, so effectively that spring is just held and gripping against the inside of the bezel and the case. In this case it was a bit too tight, so this is how you would adjust the tension of that spring to loosen it off a bit. You would slacken off all those little bends, you would loosen them off a little bit. And you do that by just giving a little tweak, each one, as you can see how I've done here. And it's trial and error, guys. You're going to, have to maybe do this two or three times. It's part of the fun of modding. As you get, get to find that some bezels are too tight, some are too loose. It is a bit of trial and error. There's a very thin slot that this fits into. So make sure, once you popped it in, you uh, do the rim wipe technique. I've just named it that. Or the rim fingering. I don't know. So you've got the rim. And then you use one's finger to just gently push the bit of wire into the slot, make sure it's seated in there nicely, bit of fingering as you can see, very nice. And that's it, make sure it's all in. And then a good firm push, it should click into place, it requires a bit of effort, and there you go. The way you know it's in, is if you check it all the way around, got the, there's no wonkiness, because you know it hasn't fitted if there's a bit of an uneven gap on, when you start to turn it like I've done here, it could pop off, but no, this has gone well, so awesome. And I've chosen this bezel to put back on it because it's a lot thinner than this aftermarket part I bought from one second closer. And I wanted to help show the dome of the glass a bit better. This is a case back removal tool. You adjust it to those little notches in the back of your case back. 
Now this is a unique design. In my full review, I discussed the whole principle of this design and why, it, why it's unique and why it aids its incredible water resistance. But that's a whole other video. So check out my other content. I've done a 19 minute full history and breakdown to the technology of Vostok watches. So do check that out if you are interested in that as well. So we've taken that ring off. Now to get access to popping the rest of the case back off, this is an, a, a Meronom Vostok part case back exhibition. I bought this from Meronom. Everything you see, actually not a lot of everything, that's unfair for me to say that, I'll, I'll tell you. That is from Meronom, that part. I'll put a link in the description. You pop that off, and there you go, there's the movement. That rotor there, that's from Meronom. It's a genuine Vostok part as well. Standard one's just silver with a B in it. I wanted something with a bit of colour to it. This is a pinboard pin, which I got. You unscrew the crown, do this the first job to do, and there's a little, see where I've put the pin in, that's a spring release to allow that crown to come out. And once you've done that, you can then take the gasket, which is actually inspired and nicked, if you will, from aerospace technology from Russia. Um, very robust and solid bit of rubber, that, incredible. Aids with the incredible water resistance. Now we can see, I've also put in here, an, uh, another Meronon part, which is, again, a Vostok part, a genuine part, so it fits perfectly. A movement holder, which is, normally it's plastic, this one is metal, it just looks nicer. Prices are dirt cheap, I'm talking about $15 here for that, and then $10 for this rotor. I'm taking the rotor out, just because I'm going to show you how easy it is. It's one screw, I've got a one millimeter screwdriver here, and then I've got my carbon Bergeon tweezers here. I like to use them because they don't scratch and they cost me about £10 from Amazon. Really easy then to carefully, obviously don't stick your tweezers in anywhere where there's anything moving. You can see the balance wheel has got a bit of life in there. Don't put any tweezers near that. Now you can see the movement is a bit more exposed. It's easier then to not have the rotor flapping around whilst you're trying to then undo these next two screws, which you do have to take the movement holder out because when you want to take the dial off of the movement, there's two screws you need to get to, and this movement holder would be in the way otherwise. So, you undo these two screws, carefully place them together, somewhere on your work mat. As you can see, I've got a whole cluster of goodies on the work mat behind me, so make sure you don't forget where you put them, because I'm quite good at doing that. So, I was very organized for this video, as you can see, I've got everything ready. So, place those two retention screws aside. Fumbling there. I'm not normally this much of a fumbler. Then um, everything is loose in there now. So what I do then is you can get a purchase in there where the crown stem goes through that into the movement. It's an easy place to pull it out. Place it with another part which you know is going to be relevant to when you put it back together. Now I use the bag because there's no fluff or fuzz on there that's going to poke up and stick into the balance wheel. And there we have it. Now the first job I need to do is take these hands off. So I put the crown back in so I can adjust the, um, the time back to a time that when I put the hands back on again is as close as possible. So it's an easy time to remember is what I'm getting at. So I put it to nine o'clock and I put the crown back in, same, same in reverse really. Now, just as you can see, the movement holder is not in there. So it's easy to see these two screws, which you're going to need to have access to with that same one mil screwdriver to undo so you can take the dial off. But oh, there's something in the way. That's the hands. But anyway, here is the feet that those two screws will screw in and grip into. So we're going to take the hands off first. So I've put this Bergeon dial protector thingamajig on the dial underneath the hands. And then you just use your lever tools, pop them off. So easy. And then take the crown back out so it's just not in the way and you don't accidentally knock the time change it and this is you've got to be fairly quick with this because the time is still if there's a bit of movement going on in the movement still and you haven't managed to wind it down to totally dead it's going to still be ticking so you want your hands to line up really well still this bit you've only really got to take two screws uh, slacken them off as you see I've done here and then there's a bit of leverage to pop out the dial you can see it's pretty straightforward, a little bit of leverage there, and then out it slides, really easy. So you know where the three o'clock position is, because the crown's at three o'clock, and you know from your other dial that 
where three o'clock is, because you go, well, there's the logo, three o'clock's there. It's easy to line the feet up in the right place. Gently put it in place. As one thing you may notice, there's something very important missing from this video. I am not wearing a crucial piece of safety protective equipment. I haven't got the finger johnnies on. And the reason why that is the case is, well, there's two reasons. One is the amount of ridicule I get. And second is I don't want my fingers to drop off because it cuts my circulation. But I'm glad it's amused you in previous content. But they're just lurking in the top left-hand corner. They're in a bag waiting to potentially be used. So maybe. Anyway, I'm redoing these screws back up again. And they go in and hold the little legs that go into the movement that are part of the dial. So it holds it all in place. So doing that relatively quickly. So you're then ready. You go, right, put the hands back on. So before I do that, give it a puff. Love of a good bit of puffing. Must keep up with your puffing, guys. I know many of you through the entire lockdown have been very good with your puffing. Now, this is Burgi on Blue Tech. Don't use Blue Tech because I don't know. I don't think it's going to be quite the right product for this. Use the official decent product for watchmaking and watch repairs and modifications. Just Burgi on Rubic Rubicon? Rubicon. One of you will correct me. Please do. And what you do is you use that to pick things up really easily. Place the hour hand here, as I have, as you can see and use my hand pressing tool to carefully place it and do a final tweak with my tweezers. Bit of tweakage. Now it's time with the Burgeon uh, special blue tack to place this minutes hand in place. Give it a tweak. Oh dear, bit of a fiddle there. Get it lined up again. It is a fiddle, I do warn you, it is not easy, but practice makes perfect, guys. Use the special tool to line it up a bit more and then pop the second hand will do the same. Again, be very careful to line it up. And you know it's worked. If there's still some juice in the movement, it will start ticking, which this one it did. And then you can check all your alignments okay here. So I'll pop the crown back in again. It's been in and out God knows how many times. And as you can see, it all lines up. But I gained a bit of fluff on there. Bit of a puff. Clear any bits of debris you pick up along the way, which you inevitably do. If you're the stubborn bits you can pick up with your specialist blue tack very good now it's ready to rebuild so i place that case on it and then flip it over same in reverse again now it's loosely held in there i've been very careful it does sit in there properly it seats perfectly safely it's not going to be unsafe for it to sit in there a little bit loose before you put this part back in which is the movement holder spacer and then you line it all up very carefully and gently with your your tweezers and then it the final tweakage, if you will, of alignment happens when you gently place the crown in. And then you can tweak it again with your tweezers. So there's no binding between the movement holder and the stem, because you don't want when you're winding the watch or changing the time for anything to rub against that movement holder. Okay, I've used that pen to get it to fully seat back in. Before you tighten anything or back up again, check that it has actually bit back into the movement and I check the time by pulling the stem out and it doesn't carry on. So I know it's seated back in the movement. Now I'm going to carefully put those two screws back in that hold the movement to the movement holder. So that's going to hold it all back together again. A little bit fiddly, but be careful, take your time. You can use the Burgeon uh, Super Blue Tack to carefully pick up and place those screws as well. That's another technique you can use. You can use it for picking up and putting down things uh, for, for many tasks. I wouldn't recommend it for lifting up pallets of bricks or anything. It's just for tiny little things. So again, this one, I use this one mil screwdriver for almost, I think it's one mil, it's very tiny. I use it for everything. It's gone with the black band on the, uh, on the stem of the screwdriver. I got this set just from Amazon for like five quid. It's been fine. Um, yeah, I've checked this, it's all in there seated, nothing wobbly or loose, all lines up okay. I put the rotor back on again, it's pretty much the same in reverse. I've just carefully placed it back on. Make sure it it would just you can feel it seating in place back onto the the bearings in the middle or the, the the shaft in the middle. Then you very carefully place that same screw you used to hold it in place back on and carefully tighten it back up again. Do do occasionally check things after you've done all this kind of stuff because I have once this rotor got wobbly because I didn't quite tighten it enough, but I could see it through the exhibition case back. It was wobbly in there. Uh, the screw came loose. 
gasket back in, case back, back in. It's good to have a quick puff before you put all that back in together just to make sure. Put the ring back in. Use your case back removal tool to tighten it all back together. Very nice, bit of a nippings. And then that, you can't over tighten it unless you've, you've got the gripping strength of Godzilla. It, it's just, just tight is good. I mean, there's no specialist torque measure unless you've got the grip strength of a child. It should be okay for you to tighten it up sufficiently. Check everything over. As you can see, it all lines up really nicely. And now it's poly watch time. These acrylic domed glasses scratch just by looking at them, so you'll get quite acquainted to give them a quick repolish. So you just give a little tiny little dab of the polish on there, give it a buff. About five minutes of buffing really brings it back. Look at that gorgeous shine. It looks like new again. Then I thought I'd try it on a blue strap. Just add a little bit of colour because we've gone a little bit more neutral with the colours here. We've got a lot more black on here. There was green before with the dial and things like that. So this is adding a bit more colour back again. And it's a beautiful Zulu diver from Watch Gecko. Quick release rubber and this beautiful soft quality. And there you go. So quick and easy. I know I've made this video look simpler. If I did it in real time, it would have been an hour long. And I wouldn't have been fair on you guys. I know you just like, I should just sitting on the toilet, have a quick look at the video. So I've checked the time on my beautiful Gekota watch. And then double check everything, reset the time. Bob's your uncle. Now, if you've loved this mod video, I've done my Pagani one. Check that out. People are loving that. And if you enjoy this, don't forget to like. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It'd be very much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the final outcome of this watch. Bye for now.